Today, we look at my DIY incubator, start to finish what I did and how I made it. Proper Royals! Hey everybody, it's Adam at Proper Royals. It's that time of year, I got eggs on the way. I gotta make sure that the incubator's up and running. But I wanna today take you through my DIY incubator project. It's not that hard, it's certainly not that expensive, and you could save a few bucks and have a perfectly good incubator to continue your projects and to get going in the breeding hobby. We're gonna bring the camera close up. I'll take you all the way through it. I got it on wheels so I can spin it around and all that kind of thing. Here we go. All right, so this is my incubator. I made it out of an old beverage cooler. Actually, I say old, it really was fairly new. I don't even know if this was ever in use. I don't see any stains inside or anything like that. I'll tell you, you can get them. I told you in some of the other videos, make friends at local restaurants and that kind of thing. They go through fridges. The nature of, of fridges are that once the compressor goes, it's generally cheaper or makes more sense just to buy a new fridge than to, than to get it serviced, especially these little ones. They'll go through them. Two, three years, they're out. They're done. That's it. Go talk to a restaurant. They might have one that you can pick up really cheap and buy really cheap. I scored this one for 40 bucks, I think. The one thing you want to check that's actually, oddly, the most important for you, check the gasket. All right? You want the gasket to be in good shape, and when you close it, you want to hear that snap, that vacuum snap. That is what is going to insulate your eggs and keep them at the best temperature possible. The rest of it, if something's designed to keep something insulated cool, it'll keep it insulated warm. First thing I did was get the cooler. The next thing I did, and I'm going to plug this thing in and show it to you really fast. It sounds really silly and I don't know how well you could see it. I'll turn out the lights for a second. I really like the blue LED in there. It does nothing. It's of no purpose other than it looks cool. But hey, it's a hobby and we like to do cool stuff, right? So I got my cool LEDs on the eggs. Maybe uh, they'll come out like they've been partying at a disco or something. Hopefully not. Let me show you how I made it so that only the light comes on, but none of the rest of the um, cooler tries to run. All right, so look, common disclaimer. Don't do this unless you're comfortable. Don't go messing around in electronics unless you have some idea of what you're doing. There is electricity in there, so make sure your cord is unplugged. Secondly, I don't see them, but on yours, if you see any bigger capacitors, larger than what's in here, don't mess with them. Capacitors store electricity and they can discharge it if you close the circuit on there with your fingers and then it pops you. Again, I don't see any ones big enough in here, but some of them can do some real damage to you. So take it easy in here if you're not comfortable. Back here, there's a little electrical panel. There's these little plugs. They plug on, they plug off. I got lucky on mine that they were labeled. This one right here says light. That's all it is. This little circuit is for the light. The rest of them, look, I unplugged, unplugged, and the electricity still runs through the fuse in case anything gets uh, short-circuited or shorted out so that it doesn't um, start any fires or anything. So you can look, these circuit boards are labeled. It just says light. That's the only, only thing on there. The rest of it I unplugged. I didn't need anything else on there. All right, now to the business of making it an incubator. All right, as I said earlier, that gasket is the most important thing. You can see this one looks brand new. If a gasket's torn, hold out till you find another one that, that is gonna be a better incubator for you, okay? All I had to do was wire up the heat tape on the inside there. Check out my videos on the DIY playlist about heat tape. There's two of them. They're not that great as far as video quality, but the content is great. I tell you how to solder them yourselves. I got one on top, two on back, and one on the bottom. This is a fairly small incubator. It's gonna be kept in a room that's an ambient temperature of right at 80 degrees because I heat this room for the rack. The incubator's only gotta go up 10 degrees. This is gonna be plenty of heat tape. I honestly could probably get, uh, get away with maybe just top and bottom, but it's gonna be on a thermostat and regulated, no problem, okay? To power it, I ran one cord in through the gasket. I didn't adjust the gasket. The gasket will close around it. And if you look, I put a bunch of the tape here to try and smooth out sort of that hump where it digs in and get a better seal on the gasket. You want it nice and round versus jutting out. Then just secure it in place and it'll plug in. 
And then the last thing, not the last, but the next thing also is I got a little fan. The fans are debated whether you need them or not. I figure if it's even debatable, let me go ahead and get one. This was under 20 bucks on Amazon, maybe under 10. It's a computer fan. It already comes wired. I didn't have to do any wiring on it. It plugs straight into the wall and it's a uh, variable speed adjusted as well. On the back of these usually, I wish I could show you, I've already thrown it out. There was a panel that was about two and a half inches deep and that panel covers the coils and that's actually the cooling unit. To see it, uh, there's a little hole right there where the tubing came in. I don't know if you can see back here or not, there's some screw holes, but that panel was eating up valuable real estate because like I say, you want space between the back of your egg tubs and your heat panels. I uninstalled that uh, coil panel. You need to do this outside if you do it. What will happen uh, most likely is that you'll break the line where the Freon and the refrigerant are stored. That's so dangerous. You got to do it outside. There's a reason Freon is regulated. Technically, you need a professional to do that and dispose of that Freon. That's my disclaimer. I'm telling you that. My certified professional took it off. You clip the metal tubing and you'll hear it release. It'll be gone. It's a very small amount in a machine this size. And then you can remove that whole panel. And on the back, you can pull the tubing through. And I actually left the compressor and the refrigerant installed in the back, but useless. If you want to make it lighter, you could take that whole thing out. If you were to do a huge reach in, a full size reach in refrigerator, that's exactly what you'd want to do is take that out. And then you just have the insulated box. All right couple important details here as well. These usually come with glass racks. You want wire racks. You want as much air to be able to circulate in there so that you have a consistent temperature. Look up here. You got one, two, three panels in this section. If you had a glass rack here and a glass here, this in the middle would be a much different zone than down here and up here. Make sure that you got some sort of free flow air travel. I used old closet racks for these. Took out the grinder, ground them down to the size that I need, and they slid in and I made the racks for them. Uh, like I said, I just took the grinder to it. I will, I'm not hooked up the thermostat yet, but I will hook up the thermostat. All of the heat panels, the heat strips, will be on the thermostat and it'll be set to 90 degrees, a flat 90. I'll keep the fan on its lowest setting and I'll keep it running. I'll run it for a week or two ahead of time with a few other thermometers leveled in there in different places so that I can check. I want to make sure that it's consistent throughout. If it's not consistent throughout, I'll probably relocate some of the heat pads, but I don't think that I'll need to. It, it, it might just be adjusting the fan as well. Sometimes these fans can put out heat that will overheat your incubator. Thermostats regulate how much heat goes into it. They do not regulate cooling it off. We don't have an AC in here. If that fan puts out too much heat, I'm going to have to find a different option. All right. So that is one thing also to check. When you put your probe in the, therm in the incubator, you want it hanging in the middle. So whether you put it to the middle rack, put it somewhere where the egg boxes will not sit directly on top of it. So you can put it in between the egg boxes, but don't put it immediately on your heat strips. You want the ambient temperature in there, not what they're sitting on. And you don't want heat strips right where the egg boxes will be. So no egg box down here on this one. And you don't want the egg boxes to make contact here. You want this deep enough to where the egg boxes have air space as well to circulate. So keep them centered and keep them away from your heat strips. Test it out ahead of time. Make sure that everything, your parameters stay straight. Then once you put those eggs in there, let them be. Don't play with them. Resist the temptation. That's a whole different video. Check out these videos to follow what we're doing here at Proper Royals and to see plenty of other DIY projects and ideas as well as our breeding projects. Thank you for joining me today. See ya.